David Ben-Gurion had a dream to bring the Jewish people from around the world together, united under a shared vision for the state of Israel to be a beacon of light for the world, a place of refuge, hope, and innovation. The Negev Desert was the key to his vision, as it is in the Negev that creativity and pioneering spirit of the Jewish people will be tested. And he brought to the Negev thousands of books and a never-ending thirst for knowledge. While some people saw barren, empty land, Ben-Gurion saw a thriving metropolis and the desert blooming. If you don't believe in miracles, then you are not a realist. Today, his legacy lives on at Ben-Gurion University in the Negev, a center for scientific and technological research where women, men, Bedouins, Muslims, and Jews work together to solve some of the world's most pressing issues. Solutions for water shortages, climate change, sustainable food technology, medical breakthroughs, and AI are being innovated at Israel's fastest-growing university. And when you look at some of the projects engaged here, it's beyond Ben-Gurion's wildest dreams. And it's only the beginning. Shalom, hello, and welcome. On behalf of Americans for Ben-Gurion University, I want to welcome you to our program celebrating the remarkable three pioneering medical science. Today, we're going to discover the many ways Ben-Gurion University of the Negev, Israel's third largest university, and one of the country's fastest growing research institutions, is preparing the next generation of healthcare professionals to respond to complex medical challenges through groundbreaking research. I'm Dr. Mike Varshavsky. I'm a physician, educator, writer, and philanthropist. And you may have seen me on Instagram or YouTube. When I was six years old, I emigrated with my parents from Russia to New York, where I received my doctorate in osteopathic medicine at the New York Institute of Technology. During my residency, I decided to document my journey and share my medical learnings with not only the peers in my field, but the entire internet, and it went viral. Today, I share accessible, informative health education with more than 23 million followers, and I work to battle dangerous medical misinformation, which has led to interviews with leading voices in our field like Dr. Fauci. Some of you might have read in the news about how, a few years ago, after two hours into takeoff, on a flight to Israel, a flight attendant asked if there was a doctor on board. I was able to administer emergency treatment to a 26-year-old birthright participant who was having an acute allergic reaction. I actually participated in birthright myself 10 years prior to that trip. Today, I am proud to host such a great program spotlighting the medical advances of this remarkable Israeli university. From 3D printed bones and tissues to cancer research and medical simulations for emergency responders, the innovations emerging from the Negev are transforming the way medical professionals from around the world care for their patients, tackle complex challenges, and make the world a healthier and safer place. As a medical professional myself, I couldn't be more excited to be part of this important event and to learn alongside each one of you. During today's program, we'll shine a light on the impressive accomplishments of some of Ben-Gurion University's faculty and students. We'll also tour one of Ben-Gurion University's newest research facilities and discuss the many ways that this fantastic organization, Americans for Ben-Gurion University, acts as an engine for future innovation and progress. Ready to get started? Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Celebrating the Remarkable Three, Pioneering Medical Science. My name is Gary Debody, and I'm the president of the board of Americans for Ben-Gurion University. We are thrilled to have so many friends who are joining us today. In just a moment, you'll be hearing from remarkable medical researchers, students, professors, and others who will give you a taste of some of the innovation, academic excellence, and world-class research coming out of Ben-Gurion University. The experts we'll hear from today, along with their remarkable achievements, give us so much to be proud of as Americans for Ben-Gurion University. From 3D printing being used to develop biomedical materials, to leading cancer research, to medical simulation, all that are saving lives, you will discover how David Ben-Gurion's pioneering spirit lives on through Ben-Gurion University's 21st century medical education that is training the next generation of medical science professionals. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our generous sponsors and community partners 
who have joined us in our movement as partners in the remarkable. We are so grateful for your help in making this event and our work possible. Together, we will solve the world's greatest challenges. Now let's get started with a few words from Doug Susserman, the CEO of Americans for Ben Gurion University. Doug is a leader known for his creative business vision and was named one of the Forward 50's most impactful American Jews for his success in reimagining the Federation of the 21st century. An international speaker, thought leader, and changemaker, Doug is transforming the conversation around modern day Zionism. Doug gets his inspiration from Israel's founding prime minister, David Ben-Gurion's vision for the Negev, Israel, and the diaspora, and how that vision is being realized today by the university that bears his name. Please welcome Doug Susserman. Thank you, Gary, for your incredible generosity and strong leadership of our organization. Hi. I'm Doug Sesserman, and I'm privileged to serve as the CEO of Americans for Ben Gurion University. Some of you are already familiar with Americans for Ben Gurion University, or A for BGU, as we're also known. Others may be learning about us for the very first time today. Welcome to all of you. David Ben Gurion, Israel's founder, first prime minister, namesake of our university, and the individual I fondly refer to as the number two Jew all time, believed that the future of Israel would emerge from the Negev. And at A4BGU, we work to fulfill his vision every day. Today's program focuses on pioneering breakthroughs in medical education and science emerging from Ben Gurion University. Yet for a moment, I would like to take a step back and share the larger vision of what we do and why we do it. At A4BGU, we do three things. First, we raise awareness for Ben Gurion University, which we believe is one of the most vital institutions to the future of Israel. Second, we secure financial resources, as the majority of philanthropic support for the university comes from the United States. And third, we run programs like our signature Zen Fellows Leadership Program that engages and immerses the next generation of American pro-Israel leaders in our work. Importantly, at a for bgu our mission transcends political differences. Our work focuses on education, research, and advancing Israel south into the Negev Desert. Today, BGU's diverse and close to 20,000 undergraduate and graduate student population make their mark on the world. In classrooms and laboratories, across our three beautiful campuses in Beersheba, Stabokeir, and Eilat, our students are transforming Israel and contributing positively to the world. Now, why is our work so critical today? And why should someone like you consider being an American for Ben Gurion University? The truth is, the days when people supported Israel just because are mostly behind us. For Zionism to survive and for Israel to thrive, we need a fresh, compelling rallying cry to mobilize a new generation around a vision for 21st century Zionism. Fundamental to this is a paradigm shift from focusing on what's wrong about Israel to rallying around what's right. You see, that's where we come in. BGU represents the great accomplishments of modern Israel in a part of the country that is beyond controversy and so vital for its future. From innovative technologies and scalable solutions dealing with water scarcity and environmental sustainability to medical research breakthroughs and modern day issues like cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, robotics, and more, BGU benefits not only Israel, but all of the world. Simply said, at A4BGU, we help Israel live up to its promise of being a migdalor, a beacon of light unto the nations. 
solving some of the planet's greatest challenges. And in times of controversy, like we have experienced recently, your support of Israel is more important than ever before. Through BGU, you not only build Israel consistent with your values, but you also amplify its global impact. Now, how do we keep Ben Gurion's pioneering spirit alive today? Each year, on the sixth day of the Hebrew month of Kislev, Israel commemorates David Ben Gurion with a national holiday simply known as Ben Gurion Day. And for the second year in a row, A4BGU once again plans on bringing Ben Gurion Day to the USA. The date of this year's program is Sunday, November 19th, 2023. Our goal is to partner with synagogues, churches, and Jewish organizations across the country to inspire a nationwide celebration of Ben Gurion's life and legacy. More information about this will be shared later in our program. And please don't hesitate to reach out to us when planning your next visit to Israel. You haven't seen the future of Israel until you've spent time in the Negev, and you haven't experienced the Negev until you've spent time at Ben Gurion University. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you even more for being part of a new movement of 21st century Zionism, one we believe that has the capacity to capture the imaginations and hearts of the Jewish people today and moving forward. Together, we can truly be partners in the remarkable. I decided to study here because I heard from a lot of students about the clinical exposure that we do at the hospital, which is right here. Also, hearing and seeing all of the researchers coming out of Bangorion made me more convinced to study here. My whole family is kind of surrounded around the medical field, so it was only natural that I should continue the next step over to become a paramedic. When I was thinking where I should go to school to study, Ben Gurion kept popping up again and again. So I decided that it's worth a commute every single day for four years. I always wanted to do this. I always wanted to become a paramedic. I was raising my family. It was very intense. I just waited for the right moment and, and then it came along and that was it. I just jumped into the water started swimming. It was my first choice because I have heard so much about the doctors that come from Ben Gurion University. I've heard that they have so much more interaction with patients and they see people from the very first year. And I thought it was a cliche actually, but it's it happened to be true. To kick off our program, we'd like to introduce you to two of Ben Gurion University scientists whose breakthroughs in medical research are about to change the world. Dr. Galit Katarivas Levy is a senior lecturer in Ben Gurion's university's Department of Biomedical Engineering. Her research focuses on the development of biomedical materials using three dimensional printing technologies. Imagine a 3D printing of a titanium hip joint implant with a porous lattice structure or a 4D bioprinting of a bone tissue using bioink that contains a combination of hydrogel and cells. That's what Dr. Katarivas Levy's lab is developing, and it is incredible. 
Her lab is also involved in the development of an implant that allows for controlled release of chemotherapy treatment for glioblastoma, a type of brain cancer. She is a native of Ashkelon on the coast of Israel and completed all three of her degrees at Ben Gurion University before conducting her postdoctoral work at the University of Cambridge in the UK. Professor Moshe Elkabet's laboratory is located in Ben Gurion University's Department of Microbiology, Immunology, and Genetics. His lab focuses primarily on performing translational experiments on targeted therapeutics and immunotherapy for gynecologic and head and neck cancers. More people are getting cancer, and their cancer is unfortunately resisting the treatments currently on the market. So Professor Elkabetz is zooming into our cells to figure out why and how to make better, more effective anti-cancer treatment. Professor Elkabetz lives in Kibbutz Beit Kama in the northern Negev. He also received all of his three degrees at Ben Gurion University and conducted his postdoctoral work at Harvard Medical School. My relationship with BGU actually started when I was around 10, 12. And actually remember when I was in my fifth or sixth grade, I had a girlfriend that decided that she's going to Noar Shocher Mada. It's for a program for kids. And I decided that I want to spend time with her. And that was my first interaction. In my undergraduate project, when I started doing actual research, and not just taking classes, I fell in love with research. So I applied for a master's degree, and after I finished the master's degree, I applied for a PhD. I started my study here at Ben Gurion University. My first degree was in the medical laboratory. And after I graduated my first degree, I moved to do the second degree here in the Faculty of Health Sciences and eventually decided to do my PhD. From the beginning of the PhD, I knew that this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. And this is something that suited me. I knew that this is the dream. I wanted to have a postdoc in Cambridge. Professionally, I had the chance to meet people from all over the world, researchers, postdoc, and students. It was a really, really good experience for me. I realized that I can dream really big and everything is open. During my PhD, I submitted an application for a fellowship at Chateaubriand collaboration with France, and I spent a year at the Pasteur Institute. After finishing my PhD, I decided to go for a postdoc. And then after almost two years, I moved to the second postdoc. It was an amazing experience for me. I studied from tumor biology to cancer therapeutics and cancer genomics. And now I'm merging the entire expertise from immunology to cancer therapeutics here at the Ben Gurion University. Ben Gurion was my first choice when I applied to come back. I actually started to establish the lab. We started um, working on the research project that we have now. I've been here for 11 years to all my degrees and it just felt the natural thing to do for me. After my post-graduation, I had the option to stay in the United States as well as to come back to Israel for several universities. And eventually, after discussion with my wife, we decided that we should back to the Negev, to the place where we grew up, try to be halutz like pioneer, and to try to promote the, the suburb. I opened my lab and from there I needed to start everything from scratch. My first interaction with head and neck cancer started around 2014. Over the years, I discovered that this community and the research of head and neck is quite interesting because the head and neck cancer, it's quite of heterogeneous disease. 
Because of the disease is quite heterogeneous, it provides us almost endless opportunities for research, for early diagnostics and therapeutics. And in the lab, we are focuses on how therapy affects the interaction between the tumor cells in the microenvironment. To do that, what we are primarily focused is on developing preclinical models that enable us to ask those scientific questions. I think my biggest success now is actually to establish the lab because I came here in the peak of COVID and everything was very difficult. It's difficult to establish a new lab and with COVID it had extra challenges, but I'm really happy that the lab is working now and after two and a half years, we have running projects and hopefully soon we'll have results to publish. What we are doing here in two levels. One of them is more of a basic science and the other one is more applicative for patients that are having surgery now. In the lab, we are working with variety of materials and we develop advanced biomaterials for healthcare applications. And we are working from bone grafts, which are based on metals and composites, to bioinks, which are hydrogels, which are based on organic materials. And we're trying to make skin patches for people with burns. And also we're trying to create some sort of bone tissue. Hopefully in the future, we'll be able to do that. We're thinking ahead, so we're seeing what we have today and we're thinking, okay, we want to improve what we have today. So I think we're thinking about the next five to ten years, what would be a good idea and how we can improve what they have now. The people that work in my lab are primarily students for master degree and PhD. And we have also a few couple of postdocs. We have all diversity of people, overseas students as well as Jewish and non-Jewish, and we are very proud of integrating the diversity of the ecosystem here in our lab. My philosophy of mentoring is to let the student to understand the meaningful of the research and the impact of his research or her research on the patient as well as its own career. My way is to encourage motivation, to encourage curiosity, and to encourage personal interaction, continuous interaction with me and colleagues together to always crystallize the novelty of the research, the impact of the research. And with that, I'm always trying to push my great students forward. I think the university has a multiple impacts on the area. First of all, it brings different people, I would say, from all over the city, including outside the country, to the Negev, which encourage diversity and disparity of the people around here. And I'm happy to say that at least a fraction of those people that immigrates to Beersheba eventually stays here in the Negev. And it's really nice to see the diversity and the new cities around here. In addition to that, I think the university has overall continuous impact by promoting young students, including kids in schools, to come to the university, to be exposed to the science and to the research. And therefore, I think it has an impact in promoting education in today's environment. The lab is actually divided to two parts. One part is the biological area, which we have all the equipment need for biological research. And it's obviously included the 3D printers. We have two, one which is relatively new, and the other one has an incubator. So that's the biological part. And then we have the material side, which we have two printers, one an FDM, a regular one, and the other one is for composites, and then we can and develop new materials. In the lab, we can print from simple polymers, which are plastic, 
two composites which are based on polymers, but we adding additives, which will improve the properties in general. We want to improve the mechanical properties. We want to improve the integration with the body. So we have an idea of a couple of materials that we can insert into the polymer and actually to create a composite. So we are developing our own materials for printing, and then we actually printing them. And in the biological sides, we are focusing on creating some sort of compositions of organic materials, which will be only from human, with the goal to actually take from the patient itself those materials in the future, and then we can print something which is really patient-specific. One thing that we are recently achieved is that we develop a biosensor that can use for diagnostics and can indicate which patient more likely to respond to immunotherapy. This is kind of a game changer in the field because there is a race of finding a good biomarkers that will be able to select which patient should get the treatment because the treatment has some aberrance effect side effects which can be very aggressive and selecting the people for the treatment is critical. So together with Angel Procador we develop biosensors and we are hoping that will achieve a major milestone in the lab. For myself, I want to be among the leaders in the field of head and neck cancer therapeutics. I think I want my students to be healthy, mentally healthy, and succeed. I want to grow to be able to provide my students skills that enable them to succeed in their own career in the future. In our lab, we have several collaborations. We have collaborations with hospitals like Ichirov and Soroka. Those collaborations are focusing on understanding what the surgeons need, what they want from the implants or the medical devices. And I think that help us actually fabricate or understand better of how to develop the new implants or device. If the patient has a tumor, then you model the area of the tumor, the surgeons decide where they need to cut, and then we know the, the gap. And then we take this gap, focus on designing how the implants will look like and we are doing it according to the size and shape of the patient itself. So we are working on the shape. It will have holes inside, like a sponge, and that's called the lattice. And we are actually doing research on those lattices. One of our projects in collaboration with Ichirov Hospital is that we're trying to understand this specific structure. This is called the lattice structure. As you see, it has holes in it. So if we want to create some sort of uh, implants that will replace a bone and help with the reconstruction, then we need to think about how bones behave. First of all, they need to be with the proper mechanical properties. So they need to hold the weight of the body, they need to stand the stresses walking or running are creating on the leg. So we are studying those lattices and we try to understand which lattice will be the best for the mechanical properties and also for osteointegration, which means the bone will like it and will actually grow inside. The definition of success for me is to feel good about yourself and to feel that the outcome of the research has eventually an impact on patients. This process is very difficult and someone who believes in you, who knows that you can succeed, this is very important to have a very supportive environment. So I'm trying to give good feedback to my students when they have good ideas. Also, they know what is disappointment because it's part of the process. So after the disappointment and after we're solving the issue, I think 
they should know that this is a really good job that they did. I will feel good and I will feel success if one of whatever I will develop in the lab will really impact cancer patients. Before we came to Be'er Sheva, it was just me and my husband, and we were looking for the best place for both of us. The curriculum is built in a bit different way than most the nursing schools in Israel. We actually start from easiest to deal with, actually on a mental and emotional level and gradually you grow to see the more difficult wards. The nursing program in BGU, it's not easy. <laughs> it's very intense. Now in my third year, I can see how much more professional we are when we are actually in the hospital right now. It's just beautiful to see and also to know that in the end of our studies, we go out there and we're ready. I think that being so close to a hospital that big that deals with many clinical cases every day, every month, every year is amazing that you, you get to learn a lot. I think they really believe in the students and they want to get them to the highest level, most professional level, but they don't want to lose the students on the way, meaning they gave support. They were just there for us. So especially for me as a TA, I see how much the university gives uh, support to our initiatives as students, but also as TAs that can influence other students. I think that it makes us promote education in a way that is really different from other places in Israel and in medical schools, maybe in the world. For me, it's something that is really the reason to, to go to school here. Coming up next, we welcome Ben-Gurion University President Professor Daniel Shamovitz. A native of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, Daniel immigrated to Israel in 1984. His scientific career has been characterized by novel and field-defining research on plant biology, biochemistry, developmental biology, and systems biology. He is an internationally recognized advocate for the important role of plant sciences in feeding the growing world population. Daniel has published numerous peer-reviewed research articles and served on the editorial boards of several scientific journals. He is a 2021 laureate of the prestigious Nefesh Benefesh Bonai Sion Prize for Education and is the author of the award-winning popular science text, What a Plant Knows. Now joining us from Israel, the seventh president of Ben-Gurion University, Professor Daniel Shamovitz. Hello. Welcome once again to Celebrating the Remarkable. This is Celebrating the Remarkable 3. I'm so happy to be with our friends from all over the United States. Let's remember 60 years ago, 1963, David Ben-Gurion talking at the founding of the Negev Research Institutes, which would later become our university. He talked about founding a Hebrew Oxford in the Negev. What a dreamer. What a bold statement to make in 1963 when there were only 40,000 inhabitants, 40,000 citizens in Be'er Sheva and over 60,000 camels. Here, 60 years later, Ben-Gurion University has almost 20,000 students. Be'er Sheva has grown to over a quarter of a million uh, inhabitants. And Ben-Gurion University is one of the world's leading research institutions, leading the world in so many areas, such as sustainability and climate change, with the Goldman Zonenfeld School of Sustainability and Climate Change leading the way, taken from our experience in learning how to live in our desert for the world to how to live in an increasingly hot climate. Or the Israeli National Center for the Study of Autism. Israel's National Center for the Study of Autism is here at Ben-Gurion University because it's only here that you get the superdisciplinary interactions of people who can meet each other on campus, whether at the Soroka Hospital across the street from us, or in our Department of Social Work, our Department of Psychology, our Department of Engineering and Data Science, all can get together to drink coffee 
and think of wonderful, exciting new ways to study autism and to find treatments and solutions for this syndrome. Or just think that Ben Gurion University houses the National Cybersecurity Directorate of Israel and the BGU Cyber Labs are one of the world's leading centers for studying cybersecurity. International corporations such as Deutsche Telekom have put their cyber labs at Ben Gurion University precisely to take advantage of our expertise, our out of the box thinking, our bold thinking. Again, the Hebrew Oxford of the Negev. And Ben Gurion University houses Israel's largest department of Hebrew literature. Some of Israel's greatest authors have been professors at Ben Gurion University, such as Amos Oz. But we, our mission is not only around fabulous academics and important research. We were put here to develop the Negev, to build a new society here in the Negev. And one of the ways we do that is by educating the medical professionals who will serve the inhabitants of the Negev. 50 years ago, together with Soroka Hospital, we founded the Negev's only medical school, the Goldman Medical School, which pioneered the approach of family medicine of the family practitioner as the main physician dealing with public health. Over the years, we also developed another medical school, the Medical School for International Health, which works hand in hand with the Goldman program. The Medical School for International Health, MSIH, is unique in that its first two years are taught in English in order to cater to new immigrants and returning Israelis and putting a special emphasis on global health. These two medical schools have influenced medical education around the world, and its graduates are the core of the physicians who are serving the, the populations of the Negev. We do this together, of course, with the Roka University Hospital, but also with hospitals in Ashkelon and hospitals in Ashdod. And recently, we opened a new building for medical simulation. This is the building where we are using robots and actors to revolutionize the way we train our physicians, the way we train our nurses, our physical and occupational therapists, and our emergency medical technicians. You'll learn a lot more about this in this coming celebration. I want to take this opportunity to invite you on your next trip to Israel, come visit Ben Gurion University. You have so much to see here, so much to learn about. I look forward to hosting you. Hello and welcome to Ben Gurion University of the Negev, the most southern site of research and education in Israel. A hidden gem set in this breathtaking landscape. <laughs> faculties and over 50 departments and research programs spanning many important subjects. Our experts leverage new technologies to provide drinking water and water for agricultural and industrial use. The students here are eligible for a range of scholarships and volunteer in many important community projects which become established traditions. Let me take you to a special magical place, a cultural center within campus. Marine scientists at BGU are developing methods to rapidly grow and transplant corals into the reef and to increase their resilience. The park contains four buildings, housing high-tech companies, global corporations, and startups. This is where our scientists explore new ways to reduce dependence on fossil fuels and develop new sources of clean energy. The approach to research here is win-win ecology forging a balance between human and nature. From the desert for the world. Welcome to Ben Gurion University in the Negev. Today, we're going to hear about the Faculty of Health Sciences. The Faculty of Health Sciences is made up of multiple programs and schools. Located next to Soroka Medical Center, our students get access to real patients, innovative technology, and some of the best mentors. Let's start with hearing from Angel Pargador, the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences and a mentor to many of the students. 
The Faculty of Health Sciences stood for excellence in educating and training future generations of physicians and other health professionals, as well as for excellence in medical research of all kinds. In keeping with the spirit of Be'er Sheva, the Faculty of Health Sciences aims to educate the students to view the patient holistically, to understand sickness and health within the context of each patient's family, culture, and society. The faculty's unique, humanistic, and community-centered approach is a driving force in improving health services and the overall well-being of the Negev's population. Our two medical schools, the Goldman Medical School and the Medical School for International Health, give our students access to opportunities to help them become the best physicians possible, including clinical exposure from their first year of studies. Goldman Medical School was founded with a focus on community medicine and has been a pioneer in the field with the philosophy of treating the patient and not only the disease. The Medical School for International Health is the first and only medical school in the world to incorporate global health components into all four years of the medical school curriculum. The Reconati School for Community Health Professionals focuses on training the students to approach patient care with humanity and sensitivity, using evidence-based learning and practical clinical experiences from early on in their studies our graduates are highly sought after by medical centers throughout Israel. Our paramedic students work in an ambulance simulator, which is designed to look just like the inside of an ambulance. We use recorded calls and noise to simulate an emergency call, allowing them to learn how to handle the stress and situation in as real a scenario as possible. Our simulator uses innovative technology, and Megan David Adam uses it to train their paramedics from around the country. Our nursing department focuses on person and family-centered care, taking the patient's individual, psychological, cultural, and social characteristics into account. Our graduates recognize the importance of health promotion in the community and hospital context and provide superior care. Over the years since its establishment, the Faculty of Health Sciences has contributed to a significant improvement in health services in Be'er Sheva and in the Negev. Research activities in the Faculty of Health Sciences are broad and varied. They include basic sciences, which deal with the various aspects of medicine, health professions, and biomedical research. In areas such as physiology, virology, immunology, pharmacology, microbiology, biochemistry, and even genetics. Advanced research in the fields of epidemiology, public health, and health system management is a central aspect in our scientific investigation in the faculty and includes regional and international collaborations. The Faculty of Health Sciences has undergone significant growth and development over the last several years. We have increased the number of students at several of the faculty schools and programs. We have established new degree tracks and programs, and we have continued to encourage research that integrates basic sciences with applied research. At present, the Faculty of Health Sciences has about 100 academic faculty members, about 900 affiliated clinicians, 200 administrative and technical staff, and 3,000 students, of whom 35% are studying for advanced degrees. Our graduates are recognized and respected throughout the Israeli healthcare system and abroad for both their professionalism and very importantly for their humanistic approach to healthcare. We believe that the faculty, together with our partners, will lead the way to scientific, educational, and clinical excellence. This comes with a profound commitment to the individual and to the communal health in the Negev, in Israel, and around the world. Aside from all these incredible programs and innovations, the biggest thing that sets us apart from other universities is the Be'er Sheva spirit. Our students bond together as a family to help each other and make the medical field a better place for both patients and practitioners. Let's hear more about the Be'er Sheva spirit from some of our Faculty of Health Science students. The college life in Be'er Sheva is definitely different than other schools. I'm lucky enough to be with the whole students who study with me, who later on became friends and now are kind of family. The whole spirit in Be'er Sheva is being together and helping each other, and that's what they call the Be'er Sheva spirit. Ruach Be'er Sheva.
The other students are very different from me by age. I'm, I think I'm the oldest one, but we really found a connection because we're all very motivated towards this goal of becoming paramedic. What I like about the nursing program is that it's a really wide variety of students from all across Israeli society. I hope to always have dreams and always look for better places to be and better me to be. I do hope to contribute to the university and give back to what they are giving me right now. Also, as cliche as it sounds, to be a good doctor, to be somebody that wakes up in the morning and, and be like, wow, I love my job. I love what I'm doing. We come from a lot of different places, from different backgrounds, and we gather up into one room to study together with one purpose. All of us have different dreams, but at the end of the day, we live together, we study together, we have our ups and downs together, but we stay friends, we stay connected, and that's the thing I like the most. At Americans for Ben Gurion University, we know they not only require state-of-the-art labs and equipment to support their work and achieve those big dreams, but deserve it too. In our next segment, we're showcasing the newest research facility at Ben Gurion University. Get to know the Research Center for Simulation and Healthcare. Nicknamed SIMREC, this incredible facility promotes diverse interdisciplinary research to increase our understanding of healthcare science, tools, processes, services, and management, all through immersive high-tech simulation. This BGU facility is actually the only medical simulation center in all of Israel. Let's find out how Simrek is training not just Ben Gurion University students, but our community in the Negev and beyond. Get it and collapse on the side. Immediately knew that something serious had happened. I was lying in the middle of the road, can't move, fully conscious, but I know I've done something serious. And the ambulance stops, the doors open in the back. Young woman walks out, looks around to see what the problems are, and starts giving orders to the people in her ambulance, the people in the ambulance before, the police who were standing there, my wife who had come. So there was a big uh, drama in the middle of it. And uh, within minutes, had sussed out the situation. But because I was trying to avoid the pain, I engaged in conversation with her and I said, tell me about yourself. My name is Stav. Where did you study this? And she said, Ben Gurion University. <laughs> but I asked Stav about her training. And she said, I've been trained by Ben Gurion University through its simulation techniques to anticipate a problem like encountered with you and to be able to deal with it. I think simulation is not a building. Simulation is some kind of force walking in the halls of Ben Gurion University. When I started my teaching here in, in Ben Gurion, there wasn't any building, we had a few classes in the basement with a few uh, simulation dolls. It was just a mass of period, education and excitement. Each simulation station is a comprehensive and independent teaching module providing invaluable experience and training on key medical equipment in preparation for real-life patients. Dynamic simulation challenges students by changing in real time in response to their actions. עצמה מקנה ביטחון בעצם זה שאתה מתעסק במשהו ושאתה חוזר עליו ואז כשאתה מגיע לשטח אתה מגיע עם הרבה יותר ביטחון גם לסיטואציות שהן קצת יותר מורכבות. You can't train modern doctors, modern doctors for books. פעם 
הראשונה שהגעתי לזירה של תאונת דרכים מאוד קשה, לקחתי נשימה עמוקה, נזכרתי איך זה היה כשתרגלתי על בובות, וזה ממש אותו דבר. And for me, teaching simulation, but also learning from simulation, was a huge part of becoming a doctor. The first time I went to do an epidural, I took the needle too far. You really don't want to do it, and it happened on my first time. If I had a good simulation about how to do an epidural, how much better could I have been faster? A few weeks later, I was back, more or less, back to myself. I had a fractured femur, and they put in some spare parts, made everything perfect. So staff came to my office. I said, look, I was in this unknown situation, unclear. First time it's ever happened to me in my life, hopefully the last time. You came and gave me confidence. You were in charge. You knew what was supposed to be done. And immediately you took me, then a 61-year-old, and put me into this situation of, I'm in control. And that's why this building is so incredibly important. Because the medical professionals coming here are going to be faced in real life with real life situations like mine. Unknown, unexpected. It's not just us doctors that come here into the simulation center. We got paramedic, nurses, physical therapists, and these people are doing a great job all around their Sheva. And so the skills that we get here are expanding to all over Israel from these professional healthcare workers that get these amazing tools. Establishing a university here had the purpose of not just serving those people in the region, but serving a wider community, and the impact has a ripple effect. וכמוני, רבים מה, מהלימודים, חברים שלי לתואר, נשארו כאן לגור בבאר שבע, לעסוק כפרמדיקים, להשתלב בעבודה בדרום. So it's an incredibly important contribution to not just Baer Sheva, where the university is uh, located, but the Negev and the state of Israel. It's like the dream is coming true. I can't even dream further than this because the people here are, are taking us so far and so fast that I didn't even catch up with my dreams to what they're already doing. There are so many ways to get involved with our work at Americans for Ben Gurion University and support even more amazing events like Ben Gurion Day in the USA. You can join local chapter events, attend virtual events, and reach out to Americans for Ben Gurion University representatives in your community. Check out these upcoming events. For even more ways to get involved, we invite you to head over to our website, americansforbgu.org. So, what are you waiting for? Join us as we continue to focus on and uplift all of the remarkable medical achievements coming from the next generation of Israeli scientists and ensure that our Migdal Or, our beacon of light emanating from the Negev, reaches the whole world. I hope you enjoyed our program today. On behalf of Americans for Ben Gurion University, we are so grateful you joined us. Thank you, Shalom and Lahit Raon. I hope you enjoyed our program today. On behalf of Americans for Ben Gurion University, we are so grateful you joined us. Thank you all for tuning in and thank you to our remarkable sponsors for your generosity.